So, who remembers? What did we talk about last week? Robin? James. Yes? Jesus. Yes? Cameron. Submitting to authority. Submitting to authority? Yeah? What? Lying. Lying. Ooh, yeah, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Everything else is of Satan. Anything else? Oh, yeah, when we're happy, we're supposed to sing songs of praise to God, and when we're sad, we're supposed to pray to Him. Yeah, yeah good. Those are, those are all things from James. And then tonight, I was trying to think of the title. <laughs> yes! Yay! <laughs> yes, it is Melissa's favorite word. And Michelle's not here. And Michelle's favorite t-shirt. Yes, she's homesick. Unfortunately. But but this actually fits. It was kind of ironic that we just got back from Acquire the Fire and had these t-shirts and stuff. It actually fits what we're talking about, amazingly enough. And, and the idea is, tonight he's going to talk about sin and avoiding sin. And so... In the first verse, he says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. And there again, we see that, that emphasis on prayer. Again, he's going to go back to that here in a couple of verses. But confess your sins to one another. This is something that isn't necessarily all that comfortable to do. Not necessarily something that you're just like signing up to do. And in fact, I found a little video on YouTube here that I thought was pretty funny. So I thought we'd show that here real quick. You need the Accountability Ninja. <laughs> Imported from the most intense dojos of Japan, Accountability Ninja is a fully trained, friendly assassin. Using the ancient secrets of martial arts, this deadly ninja helps you keep yourself in line. Are you tired of feeling the shame that comes from sneaking off to be by yourself so that you can indulge in something you know you shouldn't do? You need the Accountability Ninja. For only $19.95, that's right, $19.95, the highly skilled Accountability Ninja will make sure you stop doing those things you shouldn't do. What are you waiting for? This special offer won't last long, so pick up the phone and call 1-888-DUMFU-NINJA today. The Accountability Ninja can help you with those everyday struggles, like when you look a little too closely at that attractive young woman. The assassin can help you finally conquer those embarrassing habits like smoking, drinking, overeating, lust, narcolepsy, complaining, poor personal hygiene, and many more. Are you ready to stop taking advantage of people in compromising situations? Are you finding it more and more difficult to live with yourself day after day? The accountability that is trained to help you live with yourself. Watch the shame and the guilt melt away as the Accountability Ninja steers you in the right direction. What are you waiting for? Pick up a telephone and order your very own Accountability Ninja today! Thanks, Accountability Ninja. You saved my soul. From the makers of Accountability Boxer, <laughs> in 1995 to Accountability Ninja, or call 1-888-DUMP-FU-NINJA. That's 1-888-DUMP-FU-NINJA. 1-888-DUMP-FU-NINJA. Order now. Okay. So, that's a little bit over the top there, but I, I thought it was very funny, yeah. I, I found it humorous. Um, some of us need that, though, so to keep us from getting in trouble. But the idea here is that James challenges us. If you and I are struggling with the sin, that, well, I shouldn't say if we are. As we are struggling with sin in our lives, the way to, to overcome it is to find somebody you can trust who can hold you accountable. What this looks like is somebody that you know and you trust and you know that they won't share what you say with anybody and you won't share what they say with anybody unless you're being abused or you're about to hurt someone else or yourself. Those are the only three exceptions. Um, but who has the right to ask you, how are you doing? in this area of struggle. How are you doing with 
keeping your thoughts pure, with the websites you visit, with overcoming gossip, or any sin in your life or my life. Because you need somebody that can call you to give account for how you're living. We all do. And, and see, we all have this in our parents already. I don't know about you guys, but most parents call us to account for whether our room is clean, whether our bed is made, if our homework is done. It's three best Okay. Um, and that's something that God has given us, and yet may, uh, parents, it might be kind of hard to do accountability with them, but this is not that sort of accountability, though that is a form of accountability. This is where I am choosing because I want to learn to follow God better. I'm choosing somebody to basically tattle on myself to. Basically say, hey, brother, here's these areas uh, of my life I'm struggling in. Could you ask me next week how I'm doing? Because even just the fact that I've got to share what I'm doing with my time and how I'm succeeding or failing in this life with somebody else makes me think before before I do something I shouldn't. And I'll do the same for you. Somebody who keep you accountable if you keep chasing after trying to date people that aren't Christian or whatever it is in your life. We all need this. And James says if you're really serious about your faith in God, you need to do this. Now, it's really important that you be really careful who you pick. Because the last person that I want to be accountable to is somebody that struggles with gossip and you know can't be trusted to keep what you're saying between you and them. That, that, that would be a bad person to choose. Because if you do struggle with gossip, if you get an accountability relationship, you should be like, if you share, if you violate that relationship, because that is supposed to be between you and that person and the Lord and not nobody else. So be careful in who you choose to share your struggles with. Another Another thing, guys, this is extremely unwise to do it between a guy and a girl. This should be two girls sharing each other struggles and sins and two guys. There's very few exceptions and none that I can think of for you guys. It's best to do it that way because a woman will know how to call another woman on the lies that she tells herself and the ways she's trying to excuse her behavior. Just like a guy will be like, come on, dude. You know that that's hard, but we all have to fight that battle or whatever it is. So I just throw these things out here for you guys because this is something that God wants us to do. And these are just some suggestions that I've picked up over the years people have shared with me. And, um, and, and I do myself have accountability partners. So this isn't something that I'm just suggesting in a vacuum and telling you guys to do and not doing myself, but I have some people, some guys in my life that ask me those tough questions. And so, and especially if there's, if you're, uh, if there's areas of your life you know you're struggling, you need to find somebody you can trust, find somebody with the same gender. Ask them to ask you, how are you doing? Because it's the only way you're going to really, truly overcome sin. And, and the other thing, the other advantage of doing this, the other reason that God tells us to do this, is it says at the end, so that you may be healed. And I don't believe this is talking physical healing, but spiritual. Because when I keep a sin inside my heart, and I don't let anybody know. It's kind of like this rock going on in your house spiritually. Or it's kind of like here in the Midwest where we salt the roads. Our cars start to rust underneath. And they rust underneath long before anybody can see it on the outside. And that's kind of what 
kind of a picture of what happens in, inside of us spiritually when we just let sin go without anybody taking any measures to help us prevent it. God doesn't want us just to let our lives rot away. I've seen so many people who have shipwrecked their lives want to listen to God and didn't have accountability. Didn't have somebody to say, why, why what are you doing going out with this guy that doesn't know God or this girl that, that isn't even a Christian? What are you thinking? And of course, even sometimes when somebody gently asks that, fortunately due to our sin nature, we still wander off and do it anyway. <coughs> but it's a great idea to have somebody there who can ask you tough questions. It goes on, and then you're supposed to pray for each other. God, help me to overcome this problem. And so you and I need to find someone you can trust and begin to open up about your areas of struggle, the things that you know dishonor God, the areas of sin in your life, somebody you can trust, somebody that's the same gender as you, And I know it seems like totally stupid to tattle on yourself, but this is the way to keep God from having to discipline you and having to bring your faults out in the open because you're not willing to face them yourself and deal with them. That's not what he wants for you and me. Let's go to the next slide here. Now here James wants to remind us of how much of a difference prayer does make. It says Elijah was a man with a nature just like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the sky poured forth rain, and the earth produced its fruit. And the thing is here, guys, that um a couple things you need to know. Number one, it was God's will worked out through Elijah's prayer. God had promised to punish the wickedness of the king and the people of Israel. And so, but he answered Elijah's prayer, and there was no rain for three years and six months. And then he answered it again at the end of that time. But you got to understand, it wasn't just Elijah praying and making God do something God didn't already want to do. I know it's, it, in some ways it's hard to wrap your mind around and my mind around. Like, okay, God, but why, what's with prayer then if it's something you wanted to do anyways? And I don't know 100% the answer for that. But I know the Bible makes it clear that God works through the prayers of his people. Jesus told his disciples at one time, fields are white under harvest. The fields are ready to be picked. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send workers. In other words, he's saying spiritually, these people are ready to hear the gospel message. But there's not enough people to go and tell them. And he told them to pray. To pray that God's will would be done. know to me like God you're your God and I don't 100% get it but I know this is the way he's chosen to work and someday it will all make sense I'm sure and so ultimately what we really need to know and all we really need to know is this is what God said and what he tells us to do and how he works he works through prayer so you and I need to remember when there's something going on in your life, in my life. Have you prayed about it? Have you asked God for help 